Today we're going to talk about the differences between waterfalling, header bidding, and unified auctions. Uh, there's a lot of marketplace noise today, and this amplifies the need for publishers to really understand the technology, the differences, and arm themselves with information so they can make educated decisions. So let's look at basic waterfalls, which is how most publishers, most app developers monetize their inventory. Most mediation layers and ad servers use the waterfalling technology. In waterfalls, what happens is the publisher integrates the SDK into the app and it makes a call to the ad server. The ad server then looks at all the ad lines and the ad network's traffic and looks, ranks them in order of priority or price. So it'll start at number one and then that gets sent back to the SDK in an attempt to render an app. Now, oftentimes there'll be no ad server. So then it goes back to the ad server, following that same chain, to number two. In a worst case scenario, it may go through all of the ad networks that I had trafficked in what we call a waterfall, on and on down the chain, until someone, and let's say number eight, serves an app. There's a couple challenges with these old waterfall systems. Number one, you have time. So. In a best case scenario, it takes 200 to 400 milliseconds to get from one ad network to the next. If, they have, if they're sent back to the SDK and to the ad, they attempt to render the ad for the SDK to understand that there's no ad, it goes back to the ad server, finds a new ad line, goes back to the SDK, let's say it's 400 milliseconds. It's not that long if it's only one ad network. But at scale, you're working with multiple ad networks. And so as we go down that chain, and we add up the 400s. Now all of a sudden, I get to about three seconds, which is a long time. Now, in mobile we have some pre-caching technologies, but if the user has to wait three seconds, or if you have to wait three seconds to show a user an ad, you're losing opportunity, and at best, it's a really bad user experience. So time is certainly a concern here with waterfalls. The second thing is price. So. When you enter in an ad network into a waterfall technology, you typically have to put in a CPM. And so I may have to put in for this ad network that they're paying me $10. For ad network number two, as you might imagine, they're gonna pay me less. It's eight, six, five, 475, and down and down we go. It's like it's the bottom player who's paying me the least. We order it in terms of price. For some ad networks, it's going to be just a stated CPM. For some ad networks, I'm gonna pull in yesterday's data. And so for one day, they may pay me 10. Tomorrow, it may show you know, the day before, and it's gonna show me $9. Either way, it's old, historical, uh, stale data. The challenge is with the growth of programmatic, some of these buyers may be able to pay more. So this six might actually be 750 for a particular user. Or this $3 might actually be $9.25. But these, have, these waterfall systems have no way to capture that and enter that into the waterfall. So I can't capture that yield. The third challenge is opportunity cost. So because this is a waterfall system, the first ad network is going to, to see all of the inventory. So let's say I have 10 million ad class per day. The first ad network gets to see all of it. They can determine which users they want to monetize, which uh, device IDs they, they want to take, um, and then serve those ads. So let's say ad network number one takes two million ads, and number two gets eight million. Down and down we go, he gets six, he gets four, he gets three, he only gets one, he gets 500k, and this guy only gets 500k or whatever again. So what you see here is we have a funnel. The guy at the top gets to see all the inventory, choose the best pieces and uh, the users that they want to monetize, and then as we get lower in the chain, lower in the waterfall, they see only a fraction or a subset of my inventory. This has negative consequences for, especially for the people down here. I only get to see a subset 
typically the best users are being monetized at the top, and so I'm getting remnant inventory. And so it's somewhat of a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're put at the bottom of the waterfall or even at the middle, you're like you're, you're going to have a hard time getting to the top of the waterfall because you're seeing um, uh, users that were not selected or monetized by the top players. So three challenges here with waterfalls. As programmatic has exploded uh, in the desktop and mobile web, mobile web environment, header bidding came into play. And now we've seen some header bidding partners come into mobile apps. So how does that work? Well, now instead of putting in one SDK, the app developer has to put in two SDKs. I put in my mediation or answer SDK, and now I'm putting in my header bidding SDK. Same thing, add call comes in. Now there's two calls being made. One to the typical mediation or answering SDK, and one to the header bidding SDK. At this time, there's going to be two calls going out. One's going to go to the header bidding ad server and all the partners traffic there. Now, the nice part is, instead of it being a waterfall, this is going to be a simultaneous auction to all the partners traffic within that header bidding platform. Um, ad exchanges, DSPs, trading desks, whoever it may be, there's going to be a simultaneous call go out, it's going to return the bids back to the SDK. At the same time, I still have ad lines trafficked in my mediation layer. And so when the ad call comes in, it's going to grab a bid from the header bidding partner. It's going to communicate back to the mediation ad server, which is going to look at the ad lines traffic. Now, you'll notice we have lines set up for the header bidding platform. So in order to work with the header bidding platform and the mediation layer, I have to designate specific price points in the waterfall. So this may be designated as a $15 placement. And this other header bidding placement may be a $8. They're arbitrary, wherever you like. And this one might be $4. Then I have my typical ad network partners. You know, this one's 10, this one's nine, this one's six, this one's three, this one's two. The nice part about this setup is that I can now introduce some programmatic partners. They're called simultaneously. I get dynamic bids back, and then it's put into my waterfall. The downside is that I still have a disjointed system. I'm running an auction here and a waterfall here. I may have an auction also within these, within these lines. So I have an auction within an auction. Um, the other challenge is I'm taking the result of this and I'm still plugging it into a waterfall. And so I still have the issue of opportunity costs where these guys only see, see a percentage of the inventory. I still have issues with time and latency as it has to go down the waterfall through the stack, and still not capturing the dynamic price from all of my partners. I've taken some of them, but not all of them. So there's still some issues with the header bidding setup in most of today's uh, environments. The other challenge here is that I'm essentially giving these programmatic partners first look at my inventory without charging them a premium. And so typically when, when a buyer will come in and offer you, hey, I want to purchase uh, you know, first look access at your inventory, they're going to pay a premium for that. But with these setups, these guys are essentially getting first look before any of these partners down here, which puts them in a remnant position. So there's some challenges with this setup. What's better? Well, we feel that a unified auction is better. What does that mean? Now we go to a, the scenario where there's, again, one SDK. Calls me to the ad server. The ad server then looks at all ad sources, whether they be networks, exchanges, DSPs, adapters, whatever it may be, and we make a unified call across all of them at the same time simultaneously. It then correlates responses and bids and passes that back to the ad server. So it runs a unified auction across all sources. Why is that important? Well, if time was a concern before, instead of having 400 milliseconds for each of these partners, now we have, let's say, 400 milliseconds across all of them. So I've gone from three seconds, five seconds, down to 400 milliseconds. The other concern was price, where we have inaccurate pricing for some of the partners. Somebody may be trafficked at $5, but they're able to pay $7.75. Now I'm able to return bids for each of these partners, right? which are far more accurate for everybody that can pay. So we've now eliminated our pricing concern. Third, we have our opportunity cost, right? Over here, partners, the, the guys at the top of the chain had 10 million uh, impressions per day, and at the bottom they had 500,000. With the unified auction, we've flattened that, and everybody sees 10 million all the way across. 
The reason that it's important is that the buying behaviors have changed for programmatic players. So instead of buying on an app level or a site level, they're buying at the individual impression and ADID level. And so they need to see all of their inventory. If they have campaigns that are geared towards specific demographics, specific DMAs, um, gender, whatever it may be, they're able to find those specific users within my audience. And they need to see a large amount of the inventory to be able to target those users. So the inventory and the availability of the inventory is very important. So what we find here is that, you know, this is today and old. The disjointed header bidding system is better, but we feel a unified auction is best. And ultimately gets to a point where the advertiser is able to monetize more of your inventory and the publisher is able to capture more yield.